The national heist took place in 1988 in Chicago, a time when big corporations were moving huge amounts of money through banks using transaction codes confirmed over phone calls. Jeremy saw this as an opportunity to commit a daring bank fraud with a group of bank individuals facing financial struggles. Jeremy had a troubled past, with a police tracking device on his ankle. The Wayne County Corrections Department kept calling him to surrender himself for bank fraud, but he had other plans. He created a fake company called Breeze Air Private Airlines to carry out his scheme. Jeremy wanted to pull off one last bank heist before facing prison, and he turned to his nephew, Marshall, for help. Marshall had financial troubles of his own. He borrowed money to pursue his passion for music and couldn't repay it on time. During his father's memorial service, he met his uncle, Jeremy, despite his father's warnings to stay away from him. Marshall believed that only Jeremy could solve his problems. Jeremy learned that Marshall's friends worked at the First National Bank of Chicago, sparking his plan for a heist. Jeremy invited Marshall and his friends, Rick, LaDonna, and Danny, to a meeting at a local diner. They felt uneasy as Jeremy probed them for details about their jobs, sensing that something was amiss. However, Jeremy's charisma and promises of financial gain intrigued them. He offered each of them $500 just for attending the meeting and explained that they could take advantage of the bank's inefficiencies. Jeremy argued that loyalty to an institution that didn't care about the welfare of black employees was pointless, and it was time for payback. LaDonna initially hesitated, fearing the consequences of becoming a criminal, but Jeremy lured her back with a Rolex watch. Marshall and his friends were further convinced of Jeremy's capabilities when they witnessed him handle two armed robbers with ease. They decided to join his plan. The heist team faced several challenges. LaDonna and Danny, disillusioned by their treatment at the bank, believed Jeremy's claims. They realized that the bank would computerize its system within 30 days, necessitating immediate action. They also needed printouts of current company balances for their plan to work. To obtain these printouts, they required access to a higher authority's key card. Jeremy reached out to his old associates, Buddha Ray and Bree Barnes, who had lost trust in him after a failed previous scheme. Jeremy persuaded them to help promising to repay the money he owed them. Buddha, Bree, and Jeremy posed as independent auditors to enter the bank. Jeremy managed to acquire three key cards, and using his card, he obtained the necessary balance sheets. With the balance sheets in hand, they were ready for the heist. However, Rick was offered a dream job in trading just before the heist and initially considered abandoning the plan. Jeremy convinced him that as a black man, he would face numerous obstacles and should seize the opportunity for wealth. As the day of the heist arrived, Danny, LaDonna, and Rick were inside the bank while Marshall waited to pick them up after the transfer. Jeremy was on a public phone booth, posing as the company head of their target firms. Using the transaction code, he initiated the transfer and Rick received the second confirmation call. The money was successfully transferred to a fake company's account. After completing their tasks, they gathered in a hotel room, awaiting confirmation from Jeremy. Jeremy eventually arrived with good news. He had successfully transferred the money to his Geneva account and had passports and tickets for everyone to escape before the robbery was discovered. At the airport, they knew their chances of returning to the U.S. were slim. Danny, feeling the weight of leaving his pregnant wife behind, made a phone call, which attracted the attention of the police. Danny was not talking to his wife, instead, he was in contact with the FBI. In a surprising twist, it was revealed that Danny had been working with the FBI from the beginning. Frustrated with how black employees were treated at the bank, he sought a pay raise and a guarantee that he and his friends would go free after Jeremy's arrest. It remains unclear whether the FBI fulfilled their promises, but Jeremy Horn faced trial and admitted that his only mistake was getting caught. And Danny represented those who prioritized integrity and moral values over greed, though making the heist complicated. If you like this movie please subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos, thank you.